Hi everyone, so today we're going to go over a practice problem on long distance regulation of genes. Before we begin though, let's discuss enhancers and silencers. Enhancers and silencers are long distance regulatory elements that help control gene expression. When active, enhancers can activate the promoter region of a gene to increase the rate of transcription. On the other hand, silencers do the opposite. When activated, they actually prevent RNA polymerase from transcribing a gene. So enhancers increase expression of genes, while silencers decrease expression of genes. Insulators can help control the effects that enhancers and silencers have on gene expression. When an insulator sequence is active, it can isolate the effects of enhancers and silencers by blocking them from working on certain genes based on their location relative to the insulator. But how do we know when each of these regulatory elements are active? The answer is transacting proteins. We know that an enhancer, a silencer, or an insulator is active when transacting proteins are bound to them. Enhancers require the binding of activator proteins, silencers require repressor proteins, and insulators require insulator proteins to bind them in order to be active. This shows how cis and trans elements can work together to regulate a gene's expression. The cis, enhancer, silencer, and insulator elements require these transacting proteins to bind them in order to have an effect on genes. Another thing to note here is that activator and repressor proteins are both considered transcription factors, whereas insulator binding proteins are not. Now that we have gone over this, let's look at our practice problem. We should take note of the length of the region. In this case, we're working in a gene region of 500 kilobases. Having a 500 kilobase length indicates that any of the genes in this region could be influenced by the enhancer or the silencer, given that enhancers and silencers can be either upstream or downstream of the transcription start site of a gene. The problem also states that each of these genes have intermediate expression when no regulatory proteins or transcription factors are bound to the enhancer, silencer, or insulator. In this demonstration, I'll be using a pink heart to represent an activator protein a green triangle to represent a repressor protein, and this bottle cap to represent an insulator protein. There are six scenarios we'll be looking at in this question. Let's look at the first. Here we are asked what kind of gene expression we'll have if there's no binding at the enhancer, insulator, or silencer. So this question already stated that when there's no binding, genes A, B, C, and D will have intermediate expression. So we know that answer from the prompt. Genes A, B, C, and D will all have intermediate expression if there's no binding of any regulatory proteins to the enhancer, insulator, or silencer. So, there's something here. The second scenario looks at regulatory proteins binding at just the silencer. So, as we mentioned before, when we have that transcription factor binding at the silencer, that makes it active, which means it can work on the genes in this 500 kilobase region, which means that it will work on gene A, B, C, and D. The silencer is going to decrease the expression of these genes, and given that they have intermediate expression with no effects working on them, this will cause A, B, C, and D to all have low or no expression. The next scenario describes regulatory proteins binding at the enhancer. This is the exact opposite of what we just um, discussed for the silencer. When our um, activator protein is binding at the enhancer, the enhancer is active and it can work on any of the genes in this region as we mentioned before, which means it can promote expression of gene A, B, C, and D. This is going to make all of the genes have high expression. Now, let's look at something a little trickier. In this scenario, regulatory proteins bind at the silencer and the insulator. So the insulator protein is bound. The silencer has its regulatory protein bound as well. What does this mean? So when you have this insulator protein bound, this means that the insulator can effectively regulate where the silencer is affecting genes. It's going to block the silencer from having an effect on genes A and B, as it is on the other side of the insulator. It's physically blocking the silencer from working on these genes and decreasing their expression. However, genes C and D can still be worked upon by the silencer now that it is active. So we'll see in this case that genes C and D have low or no expression, while genes A and B have intermediate expression since nothing is working on them. None of them have high expression. 
Our next scenario looks at regulatory proteins bound at the enhancer and the insulator. Again, this is a flip situation from what we just discussed. Now our enhancer is active, its regulatory protein is bound. However, this insulator protein is blocking it from working on the genes on the other side of it. So genes C and D are protected, or not necessarily protected, but they're prevented from being worked upon by this active enhancer. The active enhancer, however, still has access to genes A and B. So in this case, genes A and B will have high expression as they're being worked upon by the enhancer. But because this active insulator is blocking the enhancer from working on genes C and D, this means genes C and D still have just intermediate expression. And there's no low or no expression for any genes. Our final scenario is asking what will occur if regulatory proteins bind at the enhancer, the insulator, and the silencer. Okay, so all of our three regulatory elements are now active because all of them have their regulatory proteins bound. This means that the enhancer can stimulate gene expression, the silencer can lower gene expression, and the insulator is blocking the effects of both of these on the other side of it. So for the enhancer, it can work on genes A and B. But again, this insulator is active, so it's blocking the enhancer from having any effect on genes C or D. Therefore, genes A and B will both have high expression. On the other side, we can see the silencer is active and it can work on genes C and D. But again, the insulator is active now, so it cannot have any effect on the genes on the other side of it. Therefore, genes C and D will have low expression. In this case, none of the genes have intermediate expression. All the genes are being worked upon by either the enhancer or the silencer, and the insulator is regulating the effects of each. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope that this helps in your understanding of long-distance regulation. Good luck with your end-of-the-semester exams. You got this.